Thank you for the 20 bits, Troy. I appreciate that very much. So 20 bits for courage. I'm starting on page one. <laughs> uh, as I said, this is the book that um, it's the first book out of this trilogy. And the story is made up of a lot of trilogies. <laughs> but um, yes, so the first, this is how we'll start. <laughs> Uh, on Lara's 10th birthday, the crone dragged her outside to see her mother burned at the stake. <laughs> yes, it's not the most cheerful, but hey. <laughs> anyway, so let's start that over. <laughs> that was horrible to laugh at. I'm nervous, so we'll move on. I know, right? There you go. We got we got blood and murder. It's, it's a really good story. Uh, the first time I read it, it actually made me kind of cry. But that's between me and you. Moving on. So I'm going to start over. We'll delete that shit. Yeah, I am. Thank you. And, and don't feel like you gotta stay. Don't feel forced to be like, oh god. Ah. But thank you. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Alright. So, on Lara's 10th birthday, the crone dragged her outside to see her mother burned at the stake. Lara blinked in the weak morning sun. She had not seen daylight in so long. For five days, they kept her in her tent, alone in shadows. Alone in fear, the sounds of the trial, shouting, pleading, weeping, rising outside. Now silence filled the camp. Now finally in daylight, Lara only wanted to return to the darkness. Other tents rose across the yellow grass, similar to hers. Their animal skin covers stretched across cedar poles. In the distance rolled a red forest, a place of berries and the whispers of secret men. And beyond the trees rose the faded blue mountains where the elk roamed. A murder of crows circled above, cawing, and Lara felt her head spin, and she nearly fell. She clutched her doll, a wooden little thing she had named Mustard Seed. <laughs> the crone's talon-like hand tightened around Lara's arm, dragging her forward. Lara felt like a doll herself, helpless and small. Keep walking and don't close your eyes. <laughs> said the crone, a shaman uh, named Sheeta. Her arms were knobby, like old branches, and her fingers ended with sharp yellow nails that nicked Lara's flesh. Other fingers tore off the heads of dead men, hung around... Oh, what? Hold up. Other fingers torn off the hands of dead men, hung around Sh Shida's neck in a, in, in a necklace of bone and dried flesh. Charms to ward off evil spirits. <laughs> the crone was ancient, beyond measure. Some claimed her two hundred winters old, and so wizened her eyes all but disappeared into nests of wrinkles. Her gums were toothless, her nose beaked, her, her body withered, and yet she was still so strong. Strong enough that Lara thought the crone could snap her in two. All Lara could do was keep walking, guided by the old woman. I won't close my eyes, Lara whispered. Well, should have whispered that, but oh well. <laughs> she, the old lady cackled. If you do, I'll rip off your eyelids and make you watch. So be a good little maggot. God damn. <laughs> they kept moving through the camp. The tribe's totem pole rose ahead, and the great boil of an ancient cedar carved with images of bison, eagles, and leaping fish. Nearest crest flared a gilded mammoth tusk long as a boat, attached to the pole with rawhide thongs. The cross of wood and ivory towered above the tents, and the god Kahitala, I hope I said that right, <laughs> a deity of meat and fire. Wherever they set down the pole marked their territory, a beacon for all other tribes to fear. Around the pole brooded its guardians, the rocks, the birds the side, that were the size of mammoths. Oil dripped from their black feathers, then their long, naked Next, turned as Lara approached. Their cruel beaks, large enough to swallow men, cackled open and shut, and their tal talons, which were longer than human arms, dug into the soil. <laughs> their eyes watched Lara gleaming orbs like circles of bronze. Uh, were they not tethered to the totem, Lara thought they'd leap towards her, her, tear out her entrails, and feast. The tribesmen stood everywhere. Staring clad in fur and leather and holding spears, some stared at Lara baefully. One hunter, a man with a scraggly red beard, spat at her. Others gazed in pity. 
Clad in a robe of patches, a druid woman whispered ancient prayers, reaching towards Laura, but not daring approach. In Laura's old home across the sea, men now wove wool and cotton and built houses of stone and shaved their beards. beards. Yet here in the north, in the gold tusk tribe, lived older, prouder, rougher warriors of fur and stone and hair. War paint covered their leathery skin and tattoos of totem animals coiled around their arms. The crone kept tugging her forward <laughs> and Lara wanted to use her curse. The secret disease of her family, the power that would let her escape the tribe, let her free her mother, let her kill them all. Yet she dared not. Mother had used the dark magic. Now the woman would burn. Past campfires, the totem pole and a mammoth carcass buzzing with flies, it rose. The pyre. Upon the pile of wood and kindling, she stood t tied to the stake. Lara's mother. For five days in her tent, Lara had shed many tears, n yet none would now flow. The crone dragged her forward, <laughs> damn lady, and Lara stood in do -do -do -do. the dead grass, staring, feeling dead herself, feeling empty, and her mother wept. Her face was so beaten, Lara barely recognized her. It looked less like a face and more like a slab of bloodied meat. Tears poured from bruised, bloodshot eyes to flow down lacerated cheeks. When Mother spoke, her voice was slurred, thick with blood and shattered teeth. Don't make her watch. Turn her aside. Please, Lara, my sweetness, please close your eyes. Lara bit her lips so hard she tasted blood. She wanted to run away, but how could she? She wanted to close her eyes, but Shada had promised to rip off her eyelids. The crone gripped her arms now, fingers digging, hard as bronze, and Lara wondered if those fingers could shatter her bones, rip off her limbs, kill her right here with the pain. Mother wept upon the pyre, and Lara wanted to do something, to use her curse to scream, even to weep, some act of defiance or emotion, but she only watched. Behold the reptile! The voice, high-pitched and raspy, tore through the camp like a blade through flesh. Goosebumps rose on Lara's skin. Wincing, she turned to see him, the man who ruled the Gold Tusk tribe, the man who would sentence Mother to death, and the man who filled her nightmares. Zara, she whispered. Damn it, I need to get this whisper thing down. <laughs> it is, it is, but we're, we're, get, we're getting it. <laughs> uh, thank you for still being here. <laughs> The chieftain limped towards them, tall and swaying like a wicker, uh, something in the wind. <laughs> he wore patches of fur, leather boots, a necklace of bone beat and of bone beads. All right. His prized possession, a bronze sword, apa sword, hung upon his belt. The blade was leaf-shaped, double-edged, and as long as a man's forearm, sprouting from a semicircle cross guard. In some of the villages across the river, men now forged metal, plowed fields, raised huts, but Zara had always scorned them. His ways were the old ways, the ways of the hunting and the gathering of tents and campfires, of blades taken from corpses rather than forged in smithies. More than his towering height, his sword, or his mane, or his mane of his grizzled hair, it was Zara's face that frightened Lara. Half of his face was gone. B burned into something wet, raw, and dripping. Mother had given him that wound, or at least the creature Mother had become, a monster of scales, of fangs, and fire. The disease, Lara thought and shivered. The curse that had banished us from Ether, our old home across the sea. The curse that lets my family turn into reptiles, into monsters, into dragons. Zara, listen to me. Mother cried from the pyre, banish us, banish us to the escarpment. We will not hurt you. We, da 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 da. You will burn and you will scream for me, Zara said, his left eye blazing from his melted flesh. And I want to kick his ass. <laughs> you are lower than one who lies with pigs and you will squeal. You screamed, Laura thought. You squealed. She had seen it five days ago. She had dreamed it every night since. She knew those nightmares would fill her forever. The memory pounded through her, shaking. 
While the men had hunted upon their rocks, Mother had taken Lara into the woods to gather berries, nuts, and mushrooms. Mother's amulet gleamed around her neck. Yeah, why? Mm -hmm. A silver tals talisman bearing the sigil of Tal, a god of their old home across the sea, a god unknown to any others in the northern hinterland. Ow, sorry. Past a grove of birches, they found a pond, a place of water lilies, golden leaves, and mist. It was a secret place, a perfect place, a perfect place for dark magic. The curse always itched within Lara and her mother. The disease forever cried for release. They stepped into the mo pool, submerged themselves into the water, and shifted. Hidden underwater, Lara opened her eyes, and between the algae and the roots of lilies, she saw her mother change. White scales flowed across her body, the color of moonlight, and wings unfurled from her back. Her body grew, becoming almost as large as a rock, silk and graceful and thin. Then Lara changed too, letting the curse raise golden scales across her. Her wings stirred the water, and, and she blasted sparks from her mouth. <clears throat> Their claws rested on the pool's floor. Their tails braided together. Their heads, long scaled and horned, rose to the surface. Nostrils and eyes emerged into the air. Men called it a curse, but to Lara it felt really good. It felt so good. This felt more like her natural form than any scrawny raven-haired girl she was at the camp. Scaled and winged a golden dragon, Lara felt whole. She felt true. Looking around the forest, she tried to imagine flapping her wings and flying, <laughs> seeing mountains, forests, and rivers from high above, so nobody could tell, so nobody could hurt her. Sorry, why must we hide? She asked, sticking her snout over the water. <laughs> Lilies tangled around her teeth. Lovely. They say that other cursed ones live at the escarpment in the north. They say it's safe. They say Zara's own twin brother hides there, cursed with the same disease. Mother blasted smoke from her nostrils. Her eyes narrowed. As a dragon, her voice sounded deeper, stronger, almost musical. There are no others, Lara. I can't do the musical thing, but okay. <laughs> um, that's only a myth. The world is cold and large and empty. The lone wolf perishes. The pack survives. The tribe of Gold Tusk is our home, and Zara is a kind master. A master would slay us if he knew our secret, Lara said. Uh, I hate, damn it, I hate hiding. I hate this curse. Why did you have to give me this disease? You infected me. Tears burned in her eyes. If I must be a dragon, let me fly. Let me be free. I won't cower in the water. Anger flowed through Lara, rattling her, sco her skulls, <laughs> her scales, and flamed, and flamed her. With a cry, she beat her wings as she rose from the pool, water and algae dripping off her scales, claws scratching at the air. Mother gasped and stared from below. Lara knew the rule, only become a dragon underwater, in the darkness of night, or in deep caves, never in the open. They had been caught- what? Hold up. Sorry. This damn thing is not working for me very well. This is why- Physical copies of books rock. Okay, they had caught, they had been caught shifting in their last home, a place Zara could hardly remember, and they they had barely escaped. But Lara didn't care. Lara was done caring. She hated hiding, and she would fly. She beat her wings, rising higher and soaring between the trees until she crashed through the forest canopy, with a sh with a shower of orange leaves. The cold wind streamed around her, and Lara laughed. This was freedom. This was who she was, and this was, and they called it a disease. But she felt healthier than ever. Not a monster, but a noble spirit of fire. Lara! <laughs> she looked down to see her mother rising from the forest, a slim white dragon with blue eyes. I can fly! Laura shouted and laughed. I can fly to the escarpment. I can find the others. I know they're real. I... Dot, 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 dot. Lara, come back here. <laughs> her mother shouted, flying towards her. The white dragon reached out her claws, grabbed her Lara's leg, and tugged. Lara screamed and tried to free herself, and her wings beat, and shrieks pierced the air. 
Lara fell silent, and Mother spun around in the sky, stared east, and cried out in fear. Rocks, Lara, uh, Lara whispered. The great birds, larger even than dragons, covered the sky <coughs> like vult oversized vultures. Their heads were bald, their necks gangly, <laughs> their black feathers damp with the oil they secreted. Secreted, sorry. <laughs> their talons reached out, and upon their backs rode the hunters of Gold Tusk tri of the Gold Tusk tribe. At their lead, riding upon a massive rock that dwarfed the others, rode Zara. The curse of the reptile rises, <laughs> cried the chieftain, his hair billowing. He raised a flint-tipped spear in his hand. Feathers and s raven skulls adorned its shaft. Behold the word dragon. Mother hovered and snarled, hiding Lara behind her. She faced the advancing horde. Dozens of them flew towards her. Fly down into the forest, she said softly, still facing the foul birds. It took Lara a few heartbeats to realize her mother was even talking to her. They haven't seen you yet. Land among them. Ah, land among them in the trees. Become human again and return to the camp. We have to flee, Lara said. They're too fast, Mother replied. They will catch us if we go, if we flee. Into the forest, go. I'll hold them off. And the rocks shrieked, nearing it as they drew near. Their stench filled the air, thick as fog, and their cries split the sky, slamming against Lara's eardrums. Lara shook, hesitating, wanting to fight too, wanting to drag a mother to safety, wanting to fly north and find the other dragons fabled to exist, but she simply obeyed. She flew down past the leafy canopy. Before she hit the ground, she heard screams from above. Fire blazed overhead and blood rained. Lara landed by the pool, shifted back into human form and gazed up at the sky. She trembled. She wanted to cry out, but dared not. Past the branches, she caught only glimpses of the violence. She saw her mother blowing fire, a blaze greater than any pyre, tinged blue and white with horrible heat. She saw Zahara, Zahara ignite, scream, and burn upon his rock. And then only smoke, talons cutting into scales, and, patter, and pattering blood on fallen leaves. A human again, ten years old, scrawny as a twig, and clad only in her buffalo pelt, <laughs> Lara ran. She ran through the forest, across the meadow, and into their camp. She ran until Shahida... Wizened, cackling, covered in moles, grabbed her. She screamed in the crone's grasp as the hunters returned with their catch. Mother was now in human form, beaten and bloodied, tied with ropes. She was trying to shift into a dragon again. Scales appeared and disappeared upon her body, but whenever she began to grow, the ropes dug deeper into her flesh, shoving her back into human form. Men tossed Mother onto the ground, kicking, striking her with sticks, and Lara wanted to run to her. She wanted to shift into a dragon to save her, but she only raced into her tent, and she only trembled. For five days she cowered, cowered as she guarded the tent, sealing the Hara in the shadows. And now she stood here, staring, all her tears spent, watching her mother upon the pyre, watching Zara lift a torch and bring it toward the pile of wood and kindling. Mm. Okay, one second. This is going to change. Yay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> please, Lara whispered. And finally her eyes dampened. Please, Zara, please don't kill her. Please. The chieftain slowly turned toward her. He stared, the wound of his face dripping pus and blood. Slowly a smile crossed across his face, displaying crooked teeth. One day, little worm, he said, voice like wooden chips ready, rubbing together. One day, I will find the curse in you too, and you will scream like this. And with that, Zara spun back toward the pyre and tossed his torch onto the kindling. Oil soaked the straw, twigs, and dried leaves. They burst into flame with the speed and ferocity of dragon fire. And Mother screamed. The, s the fire spread across her, blazing skyward, licking off muscle, flesh off bones. Oh, sorry, licking skin off muscle, flesh off bones. And still her mother screamed, writhing in her bonds, begging and wailing. And Lara screamed too. She tried to close her eyes, but Sheeta grabbed her eyelids with her rough 
fingers and held them open. She tried to break free, to run to her mother, to flee into the forest, but the crone held her back. Mother, she cried, mother, please, please, she prayed silently, please die, please stop screaming. She, yet she would not. The screaming and writhing continued until the inferno, the fire-eating mother's flesh, as if slowly savoring a meal. The smell of cooking meat filled the camp. The flames tore through the ropes, and mother fell from the stake to the land in the blazing kindling. She managed to roll off the pyre to run several steps through the camp, a living torch. She soon collapsed, rolling and whimpering. Zara stood above the charred mockery of life and laughed. Yes, reptile, the chieftain smiled thinly, and firelight blazed against his own wound. You burned me. Now you will forever burn in the depths of the abyss. When finally Mother was silent and still, she had a spat a green glob, huffed and released Lara. She stood for a moment, staring at the corpse of her mother. It still burned, crumbling into charred ashes. Lara wanted to embrace the corpse. She wanted to save her, to beg the shaman to heal her, but she knew her mother was dead. Men tossed rugs over the corpse, and they stamped out the flame, and they bound the remains with ropes. They hung the charred, blackened thing from... Damn, this is... I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> it's emotional. Uh, they hung the charred, blackened thing from the tribe totem, a sacrifice to Kahit. Kalhita, something. Mother swung in the wind, banging again against the carved pole, shedding ash. She barely looked human, just burnt meat upon bones. And the rocks beneath the totems rose, reached up their talons, and snapped their beaks. But they did not eat yet. The great vultures looked back at Zara, their master, begging, "Eat, my friends." He nodded. "Eat until, oh, sorry, eat hunters of the sky." She's nice and crunchy. God. <sighs> With shrieks and flying feathers, the birds leaped up, grabbed the hanging corpse, and tore it apart. The beasts tossed back their beaks, guzzling down legs, arms, her head, and then fought one another for the torso and the smoking entrails. Lara turned and fled. She ran back, or she ran between the tents, tears in her eyes. She wanted to keep running, to flee the camp, to head across the open water, to enter the forest and never emerge. Other were-dragons lived in the world. She knew they must, but Mother's words returned to her. There are no others. The world is cold and large and empty, and the lone wolf perishes. The pack survives. She ran back into her tent and raced towards her pile of fur blankets and grabbed her doll. She clutched the wooden girl to her chest, and her tears flowed. We must never shift again, she whispered, rocking the toy. I promise you must recede. I promise. We'll never become dragons again. She shivered, the fire still burning in her eyes, the scream still echoing in her ears. She would remain. She would keep her disease a secret. She would grow strong. We'll become hunters, must recede, she knuckled tears away from her eyes. We'll grow big and strong and become hunters like Zara, and he'll never be able to hurt us again. Ever. I promise. Outside rose the laughter of men, and the smell of burnt meat fell into the tent. Lara lay down and held her doll close and shivered. And that would be the end of chapter one. <laughs> I didn't. I almost didn't make it. <laughs> I almost didn't make it, but yeah, there we are. So... Thank you. <laughs> Can't believe I actually did that. Um, so, thank you for the 20 bits. I appreciate that very much. So, <laughs> I actually am surprised that I was not as nervous as I thought I was going to be. It's good to see you. I will be back on here gaming uh, later. I'm also going to continue reading this because it... I know it started out very, um, intense, <laughs> but, uh, he's just, he's one of my favorite authors, uh, it's, it's a trilogy, and then the, he has tons of trilogies that go with the trilogy, um, but if, if you want, I can link you to them, or, well, I mean, his name's there, but, uh, I, 
I, I found them a while ago and I started reading these and they they mimic in a way like the you, in video games we always are attacking dragons I mean not always you got like Parthenex and you got Div Divinity where you can become a dragon but usually we're always attacking dragons and so I was really intrigued by the fact that these characters the dragons are actually the victims which they are because this humans attack you know, anyway we'll go into that nerd theory but anyway um so i was really intrigued by the fact that he took an approach of the from the dragon standpoint um wh what did you think about this one <laughs> um and, and please be honest i totally want honesty <laughs> It's very unique. It is very unique. And like I said, I really like the... Um, exactly. Exactly. Dragons are usually the bad ones. And... Um, the the entire... Like, from all the trilogies when she put them together, as far as I've read so far, is basically the dragons fight to be able just to maintain... Exactly, but see, even that is taking their freedom away. You know what I mean? Like you never, they they never can just be, and um, so I really like that they can. And there there are, this is I believe the first book in the entire, like I don't I don't know what it's called. There are many trilogies that make up the book, the entire story, but um. Uh, I believe this is the first one. However, from what from what I've read, like it's not always this like saga. Yeah, <laughs> an epic saga it is. For him to have written like as much as he's written, it it blows your mind. Like if you look at if you go to Amazon and type in um, his name, it's crazy how many trilogies there are that make up this epic saga. But like 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 you said and and like I've I've felt, it's nice to see someone looking from the dragon's point of view. But also, he doesn't just do that. Like the the entire entirety of the story is you get to see dragons trying to just exist among you know just I could think I believe they're called were dragons because they can become they can be human, but you know they have their dragon form, and so you you do get to see them. Uh, existing in peace and and you can mirror society a lot to these books but you get to see them you know existing in peace trying to be peaceful and then you have this kind of thing happen like where they transformed into their natural form and so they got sent to this horrific land um but please don't don't take the intense um in <laughs> intense uh I don't know, it was very, that, that's a very emotional, emotional part to me to read, um, but I love it, and that's something I love about that. Yes, oh my god, I didn't even propose this book. I, I wrote him, and I asked if I could read another one, and he said, um, yeah, but how about you start with this one? And so, I, I am honored and totally flattered that he let me, and... Uh, I hope I have, I hope I read it well enough, like, that was the first chapter, I definitely intend on reading more, but, um, I hope that I didn't, like, do it disjustice. <laughs> Thank you, Troy, I hope so. <laughs> um, and when I do the next chapter, I hope you'll come back. Uh, like I said, it, it's not always, there are beautiful moments in it, and, um, but there are also sad moments, and uh, especially play, being that I play RPGs. Sorry, I'm talking your ass off. <laughs> no, oh my god, I need to, I, I have to call, um, I'm gonna have to call them. They sent me seven different things I could try. Seven. Seven different things. I, I tried them all, none of them worked, so, yeah, seven. A list of seven different tech, exactly. So, it, and it's not just that Assassin's Creed, it's, the, it's that one and Liberation. Neither one of them are working. So I'm going to have to contact either Steam or uh, Ubisoft. I'm not sure which one, but uh, I definitely will be doing that. Hopefully, 
soon. I don't know. I just don't have the energy to argue. <laughs> I hate calling. I hate phones. But um, emails are getting me nowhere. Really? Oh, thank you so much. That means so fucking much to me. I've 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 been wanting to do this, and I thank you for and everybody here for for, but especially you for the bits. And I hope I said thank you for the bits. Oh my god. Is it? Well, I I, I get that a lot. <laughs> if you ever need to be read to sleep, let me know. Um, <laughs> I was telling somebody that earlier. I. I get a lot of a lot of my friends used to ask me to read them to sleep. I get very into some books, so like if a king is speaking and you got to give a really like passionate speech, I get into that. And I've only had one friend actually tell me, you know, shh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, thank you very much. I struggle a lot, um, and I worry that it shows. And I'm gonna I'm saying it, so fuck it, uh, because of like my childhood and mistakes I made, I, I'm I'm self-taught in everything, so I have a hard time sometimes sounding out words and like pronouncing them correctly, <laughs> and I get very self-conscious about that. Um, so that's that's something I need to work on. But hopefully, I did okay with that. Um, but yes, and thank you. I'm, I'm I appreciate that you you think so. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm now, like, kind of amped up, <laughs> so I might, I might read more tonight, I, I don't know, um, but I definitely think I'll do this once a day, because it is a long story, <laughs> and, and it's an amazing story, there, there are, there are horrors like this, but I promise you, there are also beautiful things, too, and, um, Thank you so much for being proud of me. You don't know what that means to me. I I respect you and I, I really look up to you. So anybody that is like that and says something like that, that, that holds a lot of weight. So thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I've read I've read this one and I've read a couple other trilogies. Um, but it's been a while and uh I, I'm surprised that I got through that first part and didn't cry. Like, I I don't I don't know was I did I speak clearly? Like, was it? Because I don't have like a professional microphone thing. I mean, my I love my headset, but it, it's more for gaming than like reading books. Um, but I would love to continue to do it. And if if you think the dragon was saying that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that got me but it it's the like her calling for her mother and then her mother defending her even though her you know what I mean her child went against what she knew was what her mother had been teaching her and then she still like a real mother should or father even defends her child and then like I don't know see it just it's very brutal and see <laughs> it gets me wanting to tear up now <laughs> But, um, but I'm very happy I could share it with you. <laughs> um, I'm sorry that it, that if, if the starting out so brutal was not appropriate, <laughs> but, uh, I think that's reality, and so, whoa, what the hell was that? I don't know if anybody else heard that. Thank you for the 20 bits, Troy. Appreciate it. Um, I think I'm going to get off here now, and I cannot tell you how much it meant to me that you were here, like massive massive if i had bids to give you i would give them <laughs> no thank you troy you you helped me out a lot um are you going to be on later tonight because i might have you seen the new game i'm playing it's trippy as fuck the collector the head <laughs> we'll play dishonored i'll get on and play dishonored in a little bit if if, if you're around and if you want to that I, I don't I normally hate videos of myself, but my eyes look so goddamn demented. Oh, you saw me f shooting the floating demons. Nice. I did not know that you saw that. <laughs> I'm almost done. With, did you see that show when I killed all those motherfuckers and then suddenly 
the fucking I fell off a cliff. Like I had been trying to get through this part for like thirty minutes. I finally got through the damn shit and I fell off a cliff and died. Yeah. Oh my god, that I I, I Jeff took a screenshot <laughs> of because I was number two on the the blurb thingy. It happens, yes, but it pissed me off. <laughs> He took a picture, and, and the picture capture that it captured was perfect. It was just like, oh. But anyways. Um, you can have your pick, which... I have another game that I've started playing. It's called Outward. And it's an RPG. But it's kind of a survival RPG. I don't know. It's really... I've never seen a game like it. But you get the pick. What would your pick of games be, sir? Dun, 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 dun. Do an RPG one outward. All right, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get off here for a bit. I'm gonna probably go get some Mountain Dew. I'll try to get a green one for you one day. Thank you for the bits, Troy. You're so sweet. <laughs> um, one day we totally have to hang out. I, 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 I've loved that I was able to talk to you about the book that. That's awesome. That's not something I normally get to do. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I bored you with that, but I appreciate it. And then I will get some orange mountain dew, even if I have to, like, hold the store up or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> sorry, you, Troy. I appreciate it. Hope your puppy is doing good as well. <laughs> Alright, but I'll be back shortly. And, and everybody, if you're still here... <laughs> And anybody, thank you for staying and listening. And Troy, thank you with all my heart. Um, it, you're greatly appreciated. And thank you for the bits. I hope I've been saying that. I always, like, I worry that I forget. All right, I'll talk to you soon. And thank you so much. I'll see you next